Hey there guys, today we're going to be taking a look at an Oculink setup running on the GMK Tech M7 here. We've taken a look at this system running with an Oculink setup before. That was with a 3060. And while it's one of the cheapest RTX graphics cards you can buy on the market today, it's not one of the cheapest graphics cards in general. In fact, there is an entire ecosystem out there of graphics cards that are under the $200 price range, and they vary from different generations. One of the cheapest ones that I could find on AliExpress is actually the GTX 1660 Super. This was the last GTX graphics card to come out before Nvidia completely abandoned the naming scheme to only stick with RTX. So that means this does not support DLSS, it does not support ray tracing, but it is a graphics card that you can buy used nowadays for around $80. And that makes it one of the cheapest graphics cards that you can actually buy to pair with a mini PC like this. And even though at this point it is multiple generations old, I'm curious how this graphics card is going to hold up against the iGPU that is actually built into the system itself. Because one fact of the matter is, is that even though iGPUs improving dramatically with each generation, iGPUs in general are so far behind that even older generation graphics cards can still put up a very good fight up against them. And I'm curious to see if a sub $100 graphics card paired with a $50 Oculink setup like this will be more than enough to give us a better gaming experience than what is built into this already very cheap mini PC. See, this is one of the cheapest mini PCs you can buy today that actually has an Oculink port. So that's where we're going to be testing today. We are going to be running this graphics card through an entire gamut while running on this setup. And we're going to see what kind of performance we can actually get out of this thing. So let's jump right on in. So the first game we're taking a look at is Black Ops 6 running with the lowest in-game graphics settings. It's a mixture of low and medium graphics settings, but the vast majority of them are in the low. And we are using NVIDIA's image scaling, which is just NVIDIA's version of FSR 1, and that is running at the balance setting. And here the result that we're getting is actually pretty decent. Considering it is a brand new title, the fact that we are getting an above 60 FPS average is pretty rock solid, especially considering that we are running with better graphics graphics settings and a higher native resolution than the integrated graphics and still getting better performance. I also took a look at Rainbow Six Siege running on here with the high graphics settings and we are using FSR but at the quality settings and the performance that we're getting out of this is pretty spectacular. You really don't need FSR here but you can realistically get away with using ultra quality or even quality settings and it won't do much to the image. It's really once you start to go down to balanced and below that that things really start to fall apart but the results here are spectacular especially since the one percent lows look so rock solid in comparison to the integrated graphics and this is the perfect title to pair with a graphics card like this and that also carries over to counter-strike 2 here running with the lowest in-game graphics settings but we are not using fsr fsr is disabled and we are running with a benchmark map so this is not indicative of the performance that you would get online this is a worst case scenario in a single player lobby like this the computer itself actually has to render everything while when you join a server you're really only rendering yourself and as you can see by the numbers here we're getting a pretty fantastic result and even though counter-strike 2 in general does run well on rdna based igpus it never runs anywhere near as good as this so overall this is a very impressive result and it shows that you don't really need to spend all that much money to get great results in popular titles like this of course i didn't want to test something more recent and heavy so here we're taking a look at the Talos Principle 2 running its heavy built-in benchmark and this is with the low in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR at the quality preset and the results here are pretty decent while it's not remarkable considering we are using the low graphics settings it's far and away better than what we were getting with the integrated graphics that's kind of what we're trying to beat here and it does do that by a pretty safe margin and of course we also have Black Myth Wukong here running with the medium graphics settings and we we are using FSR with a render resolution of a 66% and we do have frame generation on. The result that we get here is pretty fantastic, especially 
when you compare it to what we were getting with integrated graphics. We're pretty much getting a higher quality setting and a higher FPS, which means we're also able to take advantage of the frame generation far better than what we could with the iGPU. Considering we really didn't have to spend all that much money to get all of this up and running, this is a pretty great result as well. Especially since this is a brand new title, the fact that a graphics card that is this old and wasn't exactly high-end when it came out is still able to hold up, that's, that's a pretty great result there. So after playing a few games on this setup, I'm actually very impressed. I think that this is really a very solid starting point for or a eGPU setup like this. If you're considering using an eGPU, you don't necessarily need the most powerful APU on the market. For one, the integrated graphics aren't going to matter to you as much since you're not really going to be using them, especially on a mini PC. If you have an eGPU setup like this, it's almost always going to be attached anyway. But you also don't need a super powerful APU just for the CPU either. Because at the end of the day, you're limited by the bandwidth that this Oculink connector has. And that means you're not going to be putting in any ultra high-end GPUs in here that are essentially going to lead to a CPU bottleneck. So I think a, a, a chip like the 6850H is actually perfect because you get it at a great price. You get a powerful enough CPU to do pretty much anything that you're going to want to do. You get a very decent iGPU. And since you have the Oculink port here, you're able to take advantage of using better GPUs than what is built into there. And of course, you could check out the links down below to Ali express to see what the prices are in terms of gpus i found a lot of gtx 1660 supers and ti's that were around that 80 dollar price range but there are other options that you have out there another one that i would really consider picking up is the rx 5700 XT. This is an absolute great performer at the price point and it is still getting driver updates from AMD though I can't promise you that the, it's really a focus in terms of optimization. By the looks of it RDNA 1 isn't exactly aging as gracefully as I was hoping it would. But still as someone who had a 5700 XT at one point it was a fantastic card at the time and I was able to do pretty much everything that I wanted to do on it and at the price point that you could find those right now it's a pretty nice deal remember you're realistically not gonna want to put anything on here that's bigger than a rtx 4060 anyway so it really does make more sense to look towards cheaper gpus to pair with this because at the end of the day it's still going to be better than pretty much any igpu on the market right now but i'll catch you guys in the next one